My name is uh, Elder Sylvester Odiambo. I'm an elder of New Life, SDA Church. I've been in New Life for since its inception, but effectively from 1990. The Family Life Week has been good. A number of topics that have been covered are actually very topical and very essential in the family, especially ending up today with, uh, with the topic on family finances, which is a major cause of disagreements in families. So I think it has been very helpful to most families. Above everything else, I think the most important thing in a family is ability to communicate. We normally expect the gift of children when they come, we are happy. But children are also a very big source of challenge. To a number of families, yes, when children come, it is a big challenge on raising them up, but also to a small percentage of families who do not have children, it is also a big challenge because they feel the pressure of not having children. But I think children are a blessing from God. And if they come, well and good. If they don't, we must keep on waiting on the Lord and waiting patiently for, for that blessing to come. But I think for me, for most families, the most crucial thing is to know and believe and trust in the Lord. If we believe and trust and put everything in the Lord, it will be all right. At times, communication, and especially about finances, is very crucial. Uh, in family life, at times, uh, ladies can be demanding. And if you are not frank with them on the level of our finances and be frank with them and, de and show them that we have actually dedicated ourselves to their lives and therefore whatever we have we share, then it can be a challenge. So one, being frank and being transparent on the finances in the house is very important. And these discussions at times, families handle finances differently. They are the families who bring up together everything that they earn and then they budget for the month. There are others who also do not budget together for the month but allow the wife to spend the money they get. But so long as you are transparent, you will know the level of expenditure and the level of earning the wife has. But it is very important to normally have an indicative budget and an indicative expenditure on what goes in the house. But I think it is important for the man to be ready to step in should there be financial challenges. As children must be brought to understand the level of expenditure that children have. Personally, I, I, I told my children that I will buy them phones at their 13th birthday. And at that level, I give a phone and I've decided that I will not spend more than 20,000 on my children's phone. But as they grow up, my eldest child is now 20, as they grow up, their taste changes and they want expensive phones. But I've still maintained, if you want an expensive phone, I will only contribute up to 20,000. The rest you'll have to get from your savings. So uh, my children have been saving and they know that yes they had their first phone which they can they want to upgrade if they want to upgrade then the amount i will spend is up to 20000 if they want a phone for 80000 they have to give the 60000 and it has worked well for me it has worked well for me. They will give me their savings. My daughter now turned 18. She wanted an iPhone. She went through the internet. She got a cheaper source of a phone. She costed about 46,000, but I only contributed 20,000. The rest of the 26,000 she got from her savings. That is the way I operate with them. There are things that, yes, I put a cap on that expenditure and I don't raise their expectation. I tell them this is the amount I can give up to this. The rest you can get from your savings. Because as they go to school, I give them pocket money. When we discuss about in-laws in a number of, of, uh, of forums, we discuss in-laws as if we are not in-laws also. We are in-laws. As family members, we are also somebody's in-laws. In-laws are part of us. In-laws are part of our bigger family. Therefore, we need to handle them just the same way we would like to be handled. 
One thing we've been, we've been looking at, yes, people have, not all families are the same. There are my family members who could be coming from a very different background and my wife's uh, family, which also comes from a very different background. She could be coming from a well-off family, she could be coming from, from, a, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a worse off family. But we have to handle them the way we, in a Christian manner, in, in, in an inhumane manner, but not handle them as if they are total strangers in our lives. But I also believe that the in-laws will depend on the respect you give to your wife. If they are from your wife's side, if you love your wife, then you will also treat them well. And we do have to look at situation as it comes. There is nothing like this is the way to deal with in-laws. In an African society, we are very social. People will appear in your family, in your house, without notice. We just have to handle them as it is. That's the way I take it. They come in, they find us eating lunch, we will eat lunch. They come in, they find us one, two, they will do that. They have a challenge in the family as that family, my wife will tell me, my family has got one, two, three, four challenge. I'll deal with them at that level. Personally, my in-laws, my brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws are my very good friends. So at times some of them approach me individually outside my wife. And we talk with them and I take it at that level. At times, my brothers approach my wife independently. They are good friends. I think it is the way you introduce them to you. One very important thing, if you marry and your wife realizes that you respect and you love your parents, she will love them. If you talk ill about your brothers and sisters, she will even hate them the more. So with their challenges, it depends on how you introduce your in-laws to your wife. If you talk things like, oh, my mother is a problem, is what, 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 it will even be a bigger problem for your wife. She will make you hate even other more and will always bring about the bad sides of it. But if you talk well about them, if you know they have got challenges and you handle the challenges as they are, your wife will follow suit. So I think we set the tone for the relationship with the in-laws on the way we relate with them. Yeah, the family, it, it's interesting. I come from a perspective that God does not bless you for you, for you. God blesses you to bless others. I've been a youth elder in new life. There are weddings I've participated in where I never had a contact, earlier contact with this with these people but they came to me because they were youths and they wanted to wed a new life their names are here there are weddings where my wife has been the matron i am the elder in charge all my children are marching in this wedding and we catered for that we we have had weddings where yes my wife since okay i stayed in ourselves for some time since we came back there is literally almost uh, every month she is a matron. She is hosting bridal showers. When before I left, when my small child was was small, there was literally no wedding where he did not match. He was a favorite of others. It comes with expense, but you have to look at that wider family as it is. There is literally no youth wedding in new life where I have not been a committee member. So that is the way I take it, especially as a family. It's a blessing. It's a blessing for me that, yes, that whatever little the Lord has blessed you with, have a discussion with them, encourage them, talk to them. And you, you, it's, for me, it is so enriching to, to, to talk to. So as a wider God's family, yes, we, it is incumbent upon us, the people who have been in this life for longer, to encourage the others. But above all, interact with them. Meet them at their point of need. Whatever little God has blessed you with, it is not for you. God blesses you to bless others. Very encouraging. For me, we need to interact. In most cases, it might not be that in such a week that each and everything that has been discussed is a challenge to you. But you will come out with one thing. One thing that you've learned, one thing that has touched you, one thing that, 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 that you realize that, yes, I had a challenge in this area. It could be communication, it could be money. It might not be the way it has been discussed, but if there is something in most of these forums that you will find yourself associating with. There is beauty in coming together for some of these forums. The young adults, the young couples, the youth, the unmarried, the just about to get married, those who are courting. There is something, there is a lesson 
want to be learned. But above all, I think there is also a blessing in coming together just to share in the word of God. Above all, I think I will encourage young couples that never, never forget to pray. Never, never leave the altar. At times I come from work very tired, but that will not hinder us from having a prayer before we go to bed.